of questions um, in our work uh, experiences, especially for those of us who work at universities, um, and also from people on the message boards or YouTube comments, message boards, that's like very 1998. Um, anyway, people ask us how to get into research. And um, I will say that this video is created in the year 2021, which is uh, just like a crazy year that let's hope is an anomaly um, in terms of difficulty getting into research. So I don't think that we should, um, we should think about this as, you know, giving specific advice for the year 2021. But I think these are general things that will help you whichever, whatever year you're watching this, whatever year you're trying to um, get into research. So I kind of think about this um, uh, in as far as like there are three main things that you could be doing um, and there of course can be generalized or they could be broken down into really small pieces for whatever whatever works for you um, but the first thing that you can think about is uh, start out by talking to your mentors um, and a lot of people might be watching this and be like um, who like who are my mentors I'm not sure um, and don't worry because a lot of people you know maybe think like I don't have mentors yet I just started college or I'm in high school um, and so what I mean by that is talk to your teachers um, your professors if you're at college and your teaching assistants so these are graduate students who are usually leading the sections or the labs and you should ask these people, um, you don't have to ask every single one of them, but maybe for classes that you're really into, classes that are related in some way to what you want to study, um, go meet with them in office hours or email them and set up an appointment. Or if it's 2020, try to get on a Zoom call and um, ask them, you know, what they might recommend. So if you're at a university, you could ask them, uh, what kinds of research is happening, um, talk to them about things that you might be interested in, and it's totally okay not to show up to this type of meeting with like your whole research plan, your whole, you know, PhD project planned out, you know, that's not what people are expecting. You know, it's just a matter, it's just having a conversation about what kinds of things are interesting to you. So, you know, I might go, I did go to my uh, professor when I was taking aquatic ecology, and I talked about the material in the class, I asked questions, but I also was curious about like what research um, that professor was doing. And, you know, I asked questions and asked, you know, are you studying these types of things that we learn in class? Because I thought that was really interesting. And it just kind of naturally flowed into um, helping me think about what kinds of things, uh, research topics were interesting to me. So I recommend having these conversations with your professors, again, your uh, teachers if you're in high school um, or your graduate student TAs and I know for those of you who are in high school we might need to make a different video because they're you know it's a little bit harder in high school to find opportunities but it's not impossible so talk to your teachers uh, for your classes and see what they recommend the second thing that I would think about is um, so hopefully you've talked to your instructors and they've told you oh here's what I do and you've asked them do you know of any research opportunities at the school or thing, ways that I could get involved? And maybe they've given you some ideas. Um, another thing you can do is go online and look for um, research experience for undergraduates. So these are called REUs and they are paid, generally paid opportunities for undergrads to gain some research, hands on research training. And so um, I think a lot of these are for college students, but there are paid opportunities for high school students as well. So the one website that I would recommend is called pathwaystoscience.org. And at that site, you can find, um, you can search, you know, adjust your search criteria for whatever topics you're interested in, you know, whether you're high school or undergrad and sort of filter through opportunities that might be available to you and then you can apply for those opportunities reach out to um, the people that are organizing them and ask them questions um, but those are ways that you can find things that may not even be happening at your school 
And then the third thing I would think about if you are um, interested in getting into research would be um, building research related skills. So these are like um, auxiliary skills that people don't necessarily even think about um, that could be really beneficial to uh, obtaining a research experience, continuing on to grad school and being successful. So while you're in high school or college, you're engaged in your classes. And so you're one of your main fo focus, focus, I don't even know. One of your main objectives there is to do well in your classes. So um, building the actual skills that you're learning in your classes, demonstrating that knowledge. Of course, that's going to be valuable because you'll take that knowledge and use it when you go into your research um, projects. But you can also be thinking about how you build other skills. Um, and sometimes these are called soft skills, but you know, I think as compared to like hard skills, like really quantitative things, which are important too, like math, um, statistics, building up your quantitative skill sets is really important as well. But um, think about how can you build um, things like uh, perseverance. Um, so how do you approach problems or difficulties or um, failure? Um, how do you actually solve problems? So there's ways to um, develop your problem solving skills, your critical thinking and analysis skills, um, but also things like leadership and um, working in a group. You know, what is your role in a group? How do you um, lead when necessary or collaborate? Um, these are all things that scientists uh, need to be able to do. And so building those skills will allow you to um, use them when you get a research opportunity and it'll make you that much more ready. And then, you know, there are, there are skills that might be really um, specific to your field. For example, um, when I was studying coral reef ecology as an undergrad, we had undergrads who were um, going through a process to be selected to go to uh, French Polynesia to assist graduate students. And undergrads who had skills like um, wilderness training, uh, first aid training, advanced scuba diving certifications, um, you know, computer skill sets, um, mechanic skill sets, a lot of those things seem like, what does that have to do with research? But since we were working in remote, uh, a remote field station, people that had those types of skills were extra valuable. So even think about stuff like that, you know, if you can get certifications and all these things that are related to what you want to do, you should go for that. So just in summary, um, this is a video that's like way too long, but um, in summary, you should think about talking to your professors, TAs, or teachers. Checking online for paid research opportunities like at pathwaystoscience.org. And three, build research related skills so that you're really valuable once you apply to a research program. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy. Let us know what you think in the comments below.